Okay, right. So I'm hoping that you can all see that. Um, real. Let's get started. Okay, so we need to look at, first of all, why are fireworks such a scary thing for our pets? So it's not just dogs and cats that are quite scared and you know unsure of what is going on lots of other species as well can get quite frightened and um, so rabbits horses things like that so we do need to be quite conscious but we'll just focus our talk today on dogs and cats so the loud noises are very unpredictable so they have no idea what is going on they don't know anything about firework nights bonfire nights new year's eve anything like that they've got no idea so when these loud noises suddenly happen it's very scary and we of course you know like this form of um like celebrations and we have sort of you know um set events that we can go to which are perfect um for planning in advance but of course we do sometimes get the odd ones uh in the people's gardens on the run-up to firework nights and of course after as well and of course not just firework night new year's eve celebrations can also um you know like people are buying fireworks for New Year's Eve. So we need to be conscious that, you know, we are preparing for that as well. So when we're looking at a plan to help our pets, we're looking at both short term and long term. At the minute, we need to be prioritising the short term because fireworks are going to be happening within these next couple of weeks so we need to really be prioritizing the short-term things so i'm sure you're aware but we do need to try and make a nice safe space for our pets so that can be a den when we're making a den there's a picture on here of an example so it doesn't have to be a crate it can just be somewhere really nice and secure for your pet to be and I would suggest setting up this safe space before the actual day of the fireworks. So set it up well in advance. It can even just be like a, a stack of pillows, anything like that to help your pet feel nice and safe. You can put sort of scented jumpers in there. If they've got some favourite treats, you can use those as well. And do make sure that it's nowhere near the windows or um, any of the um you know, doors, making sure that the windows are covered over. So you've got your blinds and your curtains closed. And um, obviously making sure that we walk our dogs in the morning or early afternoon to avoid having to take them out in the evening. Avoiding late night walks is vital on the run up to firework night and I would say for a few days after as well because the fireworks can be very unpredictable and if you're on a walk and your dog hears them it's very very scary and it only takes one sort of bad situation to make your dog have quite severe sound phobias. So making sure that you don't do any evening walks around the time of your, your expected firework events. With cats, don't allow them to go out at night. Try your best to keep them inside the house. I appreciate not many are going to love this, mine included. So just make sure that they've got plenty of enrichment and you are um, you know, keeping them occupied if they are not used to being kept in the house at night. Microchips are now a legal requirement for cats as well. So do make sure everything um, on your microchip database is up to date with all of your information, especially your telephone number. And also make sure that the dog um, collar has appropriate tags on it. So it is a legal requirement that a dog tag has your address and name on. Um, and it does say it needs to be on a collar as well. So this is obviously not just a legal requirement, but it's really important. So if your pet did get out, then the chances of you being reunited back with them can be, you know, much better. Pets do sometimes 
bolt so they have this fight or flight reflex and if they hear a noise they may choose flight so um, do be prepared for worst case scenario making sure that all your microchip and your dog tags are up to date now the bottom bit it's okay to reassure them so it is okay to reassure them and you can't reinforce an emotion but it's important to be aware that when we reassure pets what that looks like so it doesn't look like cuddles and kisses cuddles and kisses for dogs can be quite unsettling they don't really like our faces in theirs so it's absolutely fine to reassure them with like a little stroke if they like a bit of like an ear massage that's absolutely fine if they just want to sit next to you and lean against you that is also absolutely fine but what you don't want to be doing is cuddling and kissing so you're fine to reassure them and um, you can even play games with them as well so just distracting them from the noises um, anything that your pet really loves that's inside the house away from the windows and obviously not outside in the garden so your long-term plan then we can do something called sound therapy so we generally suggest doing sound therapy well in advance of expectant fireworks however it's never too late to start so it's basically using um, a conditioning program. So we use two techniques. The first one is desensitization and the second one is counter conditioning. So desensitization is exposure at a low level to whatever the pet finds scary. And then you build it up and you pair it with some food or something really tasty or, you know, a game, anything like that. Um, and that forms the counter conditioning. So it often takes quite some time and it's best started when they are young, but you can absolutely do this with older pets and it doesn't have to be just dogs. You can do it with cats as well. So there is a really great online resource um, from the Dogs Trust. It's made by a behaviourist, um, Sarah Heath, and she has created this free guide and it's called Sounds Scary. There is a variety of soundtracks on there for you to use. Um, and they are all broken down into different noises of fireworks because not all fireworks make a bang. Not all fireworks make a crackle. There are lots of different sounds of fireworks. And because, you know, this takes time because you do have to do the, um, the desensitization to lots of different firework noises. So when you are using the guide, you do need to focus on a couple of things. So making sure as part of the desensitization that the volume that you are playing the firework noises at is the lowest it can possibly be. And if you are unable to get the noise really low, I would suggest putting like a pillow over your phone um, or if you're playing it through your Alexa or YouTube, anything like that, you need to just muffle the speakers. So just put a pillow next to the speakers to really muffle that noise as much as you can so you can start um, working up really slowly. When your pet is able to cope with the volume at its lowest, you can start to turn it up. Now, this is over a couple of weeks and we're not talking super loud. We are talking quite low volumes. If your pet sort of looks up, that's OK. But if you are getting any nervous behaviour, such as lip licking, yawning, looking away, or if you just feel like they're, they're just a little bit anxious at that point, you don't want to keep turning it up. And I would suggest turning it back down again before you move on. Every individual is different. There is not a set time on how long this would take. Um, I do get some people saying to me, you know, it's, it's just not working. Um, and that's just because that that individual just needs a little bit more time at the lower volumes. Now, you can pair this with counter conditioning for the best results. And what that looks like is, again, you play that that um, firework noises to the lowest volume. And you're going to pair it with something tasty or a game that your dog loves. It's also important to do this training when the fireworks are not on. So it's going to be in the day. Nothing else is happening. There's no thunderstorms or your pet's not going through like any medical treatment or anything like that. So when your pet is nice and calm is the best time to do this. 
So when you're playing the music, you can start to pair it with something really tasty. And again, you're going to gradually increase the noise of the fireworks. Work through the different noises. So work through the crackles, work through the bangs, um, all the different noises that the fireworks can produce. So you're going to do the same thing for each of them. The guide talks you through how to do it. And it's important that you don't just do it like as a one off and then think your pet will be fine in three years time. So do it repeatedly. Once you get into the habit of it. So I'm constantly just asking Alexa to play fireworks on volume one. And um, my pet is my cat is five years old now and I've been doing this for five years. And he is absolutely fine with fireworks, but I don't want him to suddenly develop a fear or a phobia of them because, you know, we know that older pets can suddenly develop fears like this, as well as, you know, sudden fears to thunderstorms and things like that. So your longer term plan is going to be your sound therapy. There are a couple of other resources as well, which you can find. I believe Zilkeen does a free guide as well. And you can find free sounds on YouTube for fireworks. So there's lots of different options to find some tracks for it. So there are a couple of products that you can use to help. You can also use these during the training, the sound therapy training, as well as the actual firework event. Now it's important to note that these are non-prescription so if your pet is suffering quite bad anxiety from a welfare point of view I wouldn't suggest going for a nice calming product I would suggest speaking to your vet and getting some medication for them. If your pet is showing low level anxiety so um, they might be doing that pacing or that yawning, but they're not vocalising or trying to escape or anything like that. Obviously, you know your pet better than anybody. So if you feel like they are quite stressed during fireworks, then you do need to seek um, medical advice for that. If they are quite, you know, a little bit unsettled, but they're generally coping quite well, then there are different products available for dogs and cats. So the Adaptil is a synthetic pheromone. It's a appeasing pheromone and it comes in multiple different styles. So you can get it as a plug-in diffuser. You can get it as a spray and you can sort of get, um, uh, it's like an automatic one as well. But I would probably suggest um, either the collar or the plug-in. You can also get the Feliway Optimum. So that is the pheromone. It's a synthetic pheromone for cats. It's quite calming and it does help to relax them, especially if you have a multi-cat household. So one of the Feliway Optimum diffusers will do a three bedroom house. So you don't need loads of them plugged in. You literally just need one. Feliway Optimum does only come in a plug in. You can get the Feliway Spray. Um, but that is only um, a relaxing pheromone. So it's not going to target um, the cat as well as the Optimum would. Again, they're non-prescription and Optimum will only do cats and Adaptil will only do dogs. If you have a mixed household, so you might have, you know, rabbits and dogs, things like that, then the pet remedy will do um, all of those species. So it's a valerian based product. So, um, I'm sorry, valerian is something that you can find in the human market. It often comes as pillow sprays. So it does have a little bit of a smell to it. <laughs> um, that comes in either a diffuser or a spray. You can put the spray around like a bandana on the on the dog's neck. But I would suggest using the diffuser because the spray, you do have to reapply it every two hours. So you do have to be on your game if you are using that spray. You can pair any of those up with medication from your vet. They won't affect it at all. And it is important to know if you are using medication from your vet, I would always suggest making sure that you have tried the medication before the night of the fireworks. One of the most common issues that I do see is people giving the medication for the fireworks on the day of the fireworks. And the only issue that you find with that 
is that if it either has a negative side effect to your pet, such as excitation, or um, it doesn't really work as well as it should work, or it's actually, you know, making them quite stressed. Because unfortunately, behavioural medication is not one size fits all. There are quite a few options that we have available. Um, and sometimes it is trial and error to find the perfect one for that patient. So I would suggest if you have a new product for your pet and you were planning to give it on bonfire night or New Year's Eve, etc., make sure that you give it a few days beforehand to make sure that product has no side effects and is actually quite calming. So you can get foods as well. So the foods need to contain a product called L-tryptophan. So this is a precursor to serotonin, which is that feel-good hormone. Um, and also they contain hydrolyzed milk proteins. So the one that is the most popular and widely available is Royal Canning Calm Food. So for cats, it is a long term diet. So if you do have a cat who is prone to stress, then you can feed the Royal Canning Calm Food long term. For dogs, if you've got a large dog, you cannot feed this long term. So it is only suitable for the run up to fireworks and the aftermath as well. So it's something that you don't need to feed long term. Now, when you are feeding calm foods, it's always a good idea to do a diet transition nice and slowly to avoid any upset stomachs. Um, so although the food is ideal for, you know, patients who do feel stressed and then get an upset stomach as a result of it, um, we do still need to make sure that we are slowly reducing that old food and adding in the new food. Because it's a prescription diet, it does tend to be a little bit more expensive than products like Felix um, or other shop-bought foods because of the L-tryptophan in there. But it's worth bearing in mind that it is full-dose L-tryptophan, so you don't need to be adding it alongside anything else. But you can, of course, use calming foods alongside the products that we've just spoken about, so those pheromone products that are Daptil and the Feliway you can use the foods alongside those products. Now, you can also use the food alongside any medications, but do be quite cautious. And I would suggest speaking to your vet um, because we can sometimes see the pet having too much serotonin in their body. So if you're wanting to feed the calm food as well, I would suggest having a chat to your vet if they've given you some prescription medication to help with the fireworks. There are some supplements as well available. Um, so we've got Zilkeen and Alpha ZMTT. So those products, again, are non-prescription. So they are only suitable for pets who suffer quite um, low level stress signs. Zilkeen is a milk protein capsule. Um, so you can open it and sprinkle it onto the pet's food. It's widely available. You can source it in pet shops um, and online. If you were wanting to trial products like Zilkeen, I would definitely point you in the direction of their website. There is lots of information on there. Um, and I would also be starting it next week. So plan nice and early with any products like that. So with pets, it can sometimes be a little bit tricky if they have got pre-existing conditions with fireworks, they've got the nervous behaviours um, and they've been suffering for quite some time and they need medication every year, whether that be for bonfire night or for um, New Year's Eve, then I would probably suggest having um, like a one-on-one -on -one chat and then we can um, sort of come to the base of, of why your pet is doing that. Is there anything that you can do differently? And if you've tried sound therapy before, we can look at maybe creating an alternative plan that takes things a bit slower and at your pet's pet, like their own pace. Um, the firework behaviour clinics that we are doing at the moment. Um, so it's a 20 minute chat. Um, we can do it remotely as well if you want. That's absolutely fine. It's suitable for both dogs and cats. 
Um, it's £35 for that um, and it's just a bit more of a one-to-one -one chat. So if you are struggling, I would certainly suggest um, booking in for this and we can see if we can help your pet um, just to cope a little bit better. Um, it's obviously not something that we want them to struggle with. It can be really challenging for them to get through their day if they are really anxious because when we get those stress hormones they don't just disappear so they do stay with our pets for the next few days and um, both dogs and cats feel stress in a very similar way um, so we can also do clinics for sounds that your pet might be scared of and um, that aren't fireworks so it might be if they're scared of thunderstorms and um, that's a really common thing so don't feel like you have to struggle um or you know watch your pet suffer you absolutely don't have to do that we can have a chat and see what's going to work best for you and your pet right so questions let me see how to get into the questions Right then, so Carrie's asked, my boy is seven months old and I'm sure how he will be. Would you recommend anything at this time or see how he goes? So absolutely, I would recommend let's do some sound therapy with him. So um, I've just got a puppy myself um, and I have been doing quite regular sound therapy. Um, at that age, I would probably suggest introducing him to not only fireworks, but also other sounds that he's going to hear as well. So if you go on the Dogs Trust Sound Scary, you will find on there um, the different um, sound programmes that they've got. They're all free um, and they each have individual guides. So have a look on there and I would still start it now, even though he is young. Um, Brill, hoping that you can all hear me now. So, yeah, I would certainly suggest oh i don't know can people hear me um come back to my other screen
Brill, that's absolutely fine. I don't think I am muted. We're good. We're good. Okay. Right. So I hope that's um, helpful, Carrie. Yeah. So do what I'm doing with my little puppy. Um, and, you know, you can, of course, try things like um, Adaptil. That's that's absolutely fine. You can you can certainly do those. But I'm not expecting it's going to make a huge amount of difference. So focus on the sound therapy for now. If you find that he is struggling, then obviously come and um, speak to us and we can um, suggest maybe, you know, medications or the over the counter calming products to see how he's getting on. Um, but at that sort of age, the sound therapy is is the most important bit. Um, right. Can I get a copy of the presentation? Yeah, absolutely. So this is um, being recorded, so you absolutely can. That's no problem. Right. Um, what do you think of Thunder Shirts? I've not used one, but I've tried plugins and tablets and I'm getting desperate. OK, so Thunder Shirts, um, I think they really took off, didn't they? About sort of maybe four or five years ago now. Um, I'll be completely honest that I don't usually recommend them. So the plugins and the tablets. Yeah. So again, sort of similar to what I've what I've said, the plugins and the tablets. I'm presuming that you mean non-prescription. Um the, those those sorts of things do tend to be um not as effective because they are obviously non-prescription. So they are made for over-the-counter, quite calming things um, made with valerian and pheromones. So for some patients, it's it's just not effective, unfortunately. So from an ethical point of, of view, I would certainly suggest avoid the thunder shirts because you know that he doesn't suffer low-level stress. Um, and I would certainly suggest getting medication on board at that point and um, just to help him cope I'm presuming as a boy he might be a girl sorry <laughs> um perfect right oh yes you can hear me good amazing right so next one my dog is nine years old he shakes and sometimes he's on the floor does a lot of panting when fireworks are going off OK, Mike, so um, I would probably just want to know a little bit more. So you might be um, quite a good candidate to come in and, and have a chat with me just because I'm not sure um, if your dog is uh, is on medication. Um, you know, does does she ha does he have any sort of medical conditions and the fireworks are just sort of exaggerating a little bit more, um, you know, how he's feeling because sometimes when they do get to nine years old there's lots of other uh, medical conditions that we do need to be aware of um so it you know it potentially does sound like that that he's not suffering low level stress because of the of the shaking and the urinating on the floor when the fireworks are going off so uh, for for that sort of case i would suggest speaking to your vet and getting medication that is um, suitable for him. I know you don't always want to medicate older dogs. Um, you know, I, I myself have, have had this with mine because, you know, she was getting older, she did have some liver changes and I was a bit concerned about giving her any medications, but actually that's what the vets are here for. They are here to help. And, you know, like I said, not one size fits all there are lots of different ones available for patients who you know might have concurrent medical conditions and you don't want to you know th throw the drugs at and I completely understand I've been there myself but don't feel like you know your pet needs to suffer um and I certainly wouldn't be saying you know buy an adaptal for that case because you know you might you might ultimately just be wasting your money um if the if the anxiety is not low level um did you say what the prescription medications are so as um a behaviorist and a vet nurse i'm not really allowed to talk to you about all the different medications that are available now um we do have quite a lot that are licensed for our pets and they do work fabulously 
but you always have that sort of element of okay there might be a side effect um, and we don't know if it's going to work amazingly well for your pet hence why I always suggest trying out the medication whatever it is before the event so please don't give the medication as a as a trial on the day make sure to give it you know a few days before when your pet is nice and calm make sure that they respond well to it because that is the perfect time to pick up on any issues that you might have so you can swap them onto something better the good news with um the prescription medications is that we can give you a set amount for you to trial um, and see how you get on medications that the vets give for fireworks are given um, in sort of short bursts you tend to find that you're not going to get a three-month prescription of those products and um, because of that reason right so, um my english bully becomes very stressed and wants to go out and fight them oh gosh she's jumping against the patio doors to get out do you think i should create her we don't know how to calm her we've tried everything Oh, bless her. That must be quite stressful. Um, I I would certainly suggest um, at that point, creating would not really be a good idea because we can do something called flooding. So when we do flooding, it's basically forcing them to deal with a situation that they are not happy with. So I would do some really good long term management with her. The short term management, you know, is is brilliant. But for her, I would be wanting her to change her mind on how she feels about them. So she's not as stressed. So why is she jumping out at the patio doors? So my worry is, can she see them out the patio doors? Can we keep her away from those doors? Can we close the, the blinds or put up a baby gate so she can't access that area? Um, so I would certainly get her away from those patio doors so she's not wanting to get out. Um, make sure you tie her out in the day beforehand. Um, and I wouldn't crate her. If she's happy in the crate and you've made that as her den and she feels really safe and secure in there, then that's absolutely fine. Um, when you say you've tried everything, um, just revisit what you've actually done. Write it down on paper, brainstorm. Have you actually done a long session of sound therapy? Have you done it at her pace? Have you got everything that you need to um, before you start to say, you know, we, we've tried everything because I know it can be so tough. Um, but just sitting down and really thinking about, OK, what work have we actually done? Have we done it for long enough? So like what I said at the start, it's it's so common. Um, uh, you know, even I sometimes think, oh, I'll, I'll rush ahead. I'll let my puppy hear everything. Um, and I have to sort of take a step back and think, do you know what? I've got to take it at her pace and not mine. Um, oh, Mike has replied, no medication at the moment. He has many issues with his ears all of his life. Shih Tzu started working at worrying with fireworks when he was about four. Okay, so Mike, I would definitely suggest it might be time for, you know, some some prescription medication at this moment in time. Have a chat with your vet, see what you can actually give um, with him having ear problems. Sometimes, you know, we can't always give um, the same stuff that like other patients would have, especially if he's already on some medication. But, you know, I would I would think that his mental health might be suffering a little bit when the fireworks are going off. So, yeah, let's maybe let's maybe get him on to some medications but don't forget your short-term things as well so creating that den um you know popping the radio on some radio stations have got some fantastic um like i work day um like maybe four hour sessions where they just play classical music um so i tend i think it was classical fm that i used last year they had like six hours and it was absolutely amazing another one that works so we can use classical music but another one is bioacoustic music 
So that has been scientifically proven to help calm our pets. So you can just type bioacoustic music into YouTube. Um, again, you don't want it blasting out, but you can just play that near where your pet sort of spends a lot of their time. And it might just help mask the sound of the fireworks. Right, how can you advise about toileting your dog last thing when fireworks are going on? My dog will not go out and that stresses her too. Okay, oh, double whammy there. Um, all right then, so it can be really, really difficult. And at that point, you might need to just look at your feeding schedule. So, of course, we want to let our dogs outside um, and do it in, a, as late as you possibly can. I would probably suggest look and see if you've got any local shows that you know what time their fireworks are going to be going off at. So, for example, if the local pub is letting their fireworks off between six and half past, maybe let him out to the toilet at half five, right before they start or afterwards. Um, it doesn't really help you for if the you know if the neighbours set them off, but it might help you plan if you know that like the local pub is setting theirs off. The feeding schedule needs to be changed, I would say, a little bit. So perhaps can you feed your dog slightly earlier so they can go out to the toilet earlier? Um, or vice versa, can you, can you feed them much later on in the day so they're wanting to go to the toilet, you know, about midnight? when there's very little chance of more fireworks going to be going off. So, yeah, I, I would I would suggest changing your feeding schedules and looking at the local times of the events. Right, Jan has said, my girl aged 11 will run and hide under the lowest chair table and will not eat for a day or two. She will then not go out when it's dark. She is currently on medication, so what would be good for her? I generally put her lights on so she can't see the flashes and put all the TVs on loud to assist with the deafening of the loud bangs. Oh, bless her. Okay, so at, at this point, she is showing a little mix of things. So she's got them low-level stress signs, so, you know, the, the running away. She's choosing that flight that we spoke about before. Um, and but she'll not eat for a day or two. We do tend to find that with the with the smaller breeds, that's how they sort of handle stress. They they are picky eaters sometimes. Um, and yet she'll not go out when it's dark. Very common, but that's absolutely fine because we don't want them to go out when it's dark at the time. We want them to go out when it's light, and you can slowly start to introduce her back to um going out in the dark once we are clear of the fireworks. Um, I. Because I don't really know her, her history or anything like that, it's hard to know what medication, you know, she's on. But I would say if she's still doing all of those things, it's potentially not the right medication for it. So, again, I would chat to your case vet and just see what else you could try. Maybe getting her something stronger on board. Um, and I think for her, the most important thing that you can do is test it before the actual fireworks. So see if the medication that we are giving is actually working, just because it sounds like what she's currently on isn't quite comforting her as much as we would hope. Um, you're doing all the right things by putting the TV on. That's absolutely fine. You know, if she does want a little bit re a bit of reassurance, you can provide that reassurance. There's no problem there at all. Like I said, just try and avoid any cuddles or kisses, but you're fine to do that stroking. And although she's 11, you can absolutely do some sound therapy with her as well. Now, that's going to be your long term management plan. But, you know, She's got a good few years left in her, so I would certainly let's do some um, good sound therapy and see if we can, you know, help her relax just a little bit. She might never be fully comfortable with it, but let's make her life as, as good as we can during this really scary time. Right, I'll just see if there is any more questions.
Okay, it looks like that is the last of the questions. Lovely, right, okay. So I hope that was helpful um, for those of you who do have pets that are struggling this bonfire night. Um, please reach out for help if your dog or cat, you know, they are struggling. That's absolutely fine. I am here to help and so are the vets as well. You know, they are so brilliant in providing you um, with the right medication for that pet. Um, and, you know, if you are struggling with other noises as well, like I said, the Sound Scary is a free resource. So make good use of it. Um, don't rush through it. Take your time. Um, and, you know, if you do have any any questions, you, I am um, at the Pet Vet. Um, I do work Monday to Thursday. I do travel around all the branches. So you can contact your local branch and they will be able to um, book you in when I am next there. So it can either be a remote consult or an in-person consult, depending on, on whatever you um, want to do. Um, oh no, you're absolutely fine, got to go now. Thanks for the help, definitely be trying the dogs just sound scary. Oh, I really hope that that is helpful. Um, Really appreciate your advice. Thank you. Just a quick question. I missed the beginning. How can I catch up? Um, so the webinar is being recorded. I'm not 100% sure when it will be made available, um, but it'll certainly be recorded and you'll be able to find the information. Um, like I said, if you do want to book in and have a chat with me, that's absolutely fine. Brilliant. OK, thank you all so much. I'm really, again, really sorry about the delay um, and I hope you have a nice evening and a pleasant bonfire night.